This just in, the apocalypse is on. It is true. Well, we just got the third and final piece, the latest part of this hat trick from hell. Now, you already know the other two. The trillion dollar coin to magically wipe away our debt crisis. The push to use no less than Abraham Lincoln and the 14th Amendment to avoid that crisis. And now, now, the coup de gauche that defines this crisis. The state of Illinois pushing to give driver's licenses to illegals, in other words, documents to the undocumented. The ark is complete. The world is toast. Rome is now. Okay, we got Tucker Carlson, Hadley Heap, Jonas Max Ferris. Tucker, you got a lead suit? <laughs> you make it sound so amusing, Neil. I, I'm almost not afraid anymore. I like to laugh in the face of death. <laughs> That's fant you and Nero. That's fantastic. I, I, you know, these are all signs of the coming collapse. There's no question about it. I would put the third one the least defensible. However, I mean, it's pretty. You know, there is no illegal immigration crisis that needs immediate action in the form of driver's licenses for illegal aliens. This is just a pure pander to a growing Democratic constituency. There's no other reason to do this other than to win votes for the Democratic Party. Pretty over the top. Yeah, I mean, I just thought it was part and parcel, sadly, sadly enough, of, a, of a, a world that now is upside down. We're, we're, we're giving documents to people who shouldn't have them because they're undocumented aliens. And uh, we're continuing to come up with creative ways to avoid this debt crisis by not addressing the underlying spending behind this debt crisis. Where is all this going? Exactly. Welcome back to Washington. It's a new year, but nothing changes in D.C. We've got Nancy Pelosi telling us that federal spending and national debt, I don't think those two things should be related. That's what she said, but that's wishful thinking on her part. Right, we know the math, that spending is a huge variable that determines how big of a national debt crisis we're going to have. So hold on tight, it's going to be a ride. Jonas, where's all this going? I think the world did end with the Mayan prediction. It just got a little, it didn't end the way we thought it was going with the fireball. It was that, more of a... You know, I said that too, but you twisted twist it around. I said that the Mayans right. never said it would be the end of the world. They said it would be the end, end of, of a normal world. <laughs> the, the parallel universe it's commenced. Exactly, on it. Exactly. I do think these politicians, both in a state or are actually like the attention they get by constantly manufacturing crises that have to be kicked along for two weeks because most people don't really follow the day-to-day -day operations of, of congressmen, but now they're like, you can just feed on yourself. It's like being on the real house. You want the media attention of constant fiscal cliff. Now it's two months away. Right the last day, we're going to kick it out two more months. I think that's part of it. I do think the the promises of state, local, and federal governments and the reality of it have come to an end, and that's, that doesn't fix itself easy. You are going to annoy large swaths of the population to really address it. So there's going to be a lot of bizarre behavior trying to not address the fact that these promises, whether it's pension obligations for a state or the whole federal system, the benefits to elderly population that's getting older, doesn't solve well, and it's going to be a perpetual bizarre stories like this for now years as we try to get around this problem that we're trying to avoid. We're getting around the problem by not addressing the problem. Tucker, I think you've written that very eloquently on this sort of stuff, but we'll do everything but address the problem. And so I wonder whether Republicans lost a key opportunity in this whole clip fight to make a statement and a stand and take a stand. And, and I'm, I'm wondering what happens now if they sort of regroup and rearm for this debt ceiling debate or the two month pushback and the sequestration spending cuts. When and how do they then finally show their resolve? Well, the, I mean, the problem, as you know, is that the public does not support the concrete steps necessary to get our fiscal house in order, which is to say cutting Medicare, period. Public doesn't support it. And the only way they will support it, and the only way the Congress will be able to take action, is by convincing the public that it's necessary. But they're not. And they're not doing that. Exactly. Making the case in public. That, that's the predicate to all legislative action. You can't vote and pass legislation unless you convince this democracy, its population, that your program is right. And they're not even trying. So what worries me, Hallie, when I see polls that show that Americans uh, think less of Congress than they do colonoscopies, that, uh, that's not good. <laughs> uh, that's, that's generally not favorable. Now, anybody who's a conservative in D.C. is just facing a huge uphill battle right now. We have a president who won't negotiate or doesn't know how, can't lead. He doesn't believe that spending is a problem. So he's well, what like I think living, he said in that spending, which, which world, worried me right? more in that, in that context, is he said, you address the health care spending issue. That's the problem. Take that away. You don't have a problem. What do you think of that? 
I, I, look, we're, we're bankrupt and we're about to uh, implement some of the bigger ticket items in the Obamacare legislation that's going to cost us trillions of dollars just in the 10 year window. If we look back to when Medicare passed, they were telling us that Medicare and Social Security, oh, yeah, that'll be solvent. That'll cost us about this much when the real costs have been huge. And over time, we know that. And we're about to make the same kind of mistake with Obamacare. We're stepping into a, a puddle that's basically made of sinking sand here. You know, obviously, we've got spending ills to address. But to, to and I'll, I'll, ra I'll raise this with you, Jonas, but to, to Tucker's point that the appetite to address Medicare, a big culprit in all of that, um, isn't there on the part of the public. Um, is it the president's hand? We get the politicians we deserve in some ways. The, the appetite is also not there to solve that, that very real Medicare problem with a much higher tax rate. The appetite, that's what Europe does. Like, we don't like it, but they have 50% tax rates. They just went to the public like the 75% tax rate in France, right? They have a whole new, even more left wing politicians. You're not now. using Europe as an example. The point, of the point is, is our population doesn't want to cut Medicare or pay for it. You can't have it both so ways. So they don't want to cut it, then you're going to have to pay for right. it you by taxing the other. Right, you can have one or the other. And we don't want to do either. That's the crisis. Yeah, but I think to Tucker, maybe your point is, if there's more of an appetite to tax than to cut. So if that's the case, then what are you looking at down the road? Well, I mean, you're, th there's not actually an appetite to pay taxes. There's an appetite for other people other who people you've never met, who are in okay. some mythical upper tax bracket to pay for it, for the rich people to pay for it. And so there's quite an appetite for that. I think the only solution is a less progressive tax code under which the average person feels the sting of the programs he's benefiting from. You'll never want smaller government if you're not paying for it. Why would you? Right, yeah. and here we are at the end of this, this payroll tax holiday that's come to an end, and I'm talking to people in the millennial generation. Our payroll taxes just went up, so we're paying more into programs like Social Security, like Medicare, and quite frankly, we know they're not going to be there by the time we retire. We know that's money going down the drain that we'll never see again. The promise that this is some kind of program that you pay into and then you get something out of, that's frankly not true for people anywhere uh, who, are, who are working right now. Well, that's okay. If the young people, if you're burnt, that's all right. If I, if I can just get under the deadline, it's okay. Um, but that, that worries me in a way. Think about that, Jonas, because the argument seems to be people are cynical about the prospects they're going to get all of this stuff. So why not address the kind of things we could do now to make sure they can? They don't think they're going to get them, but they don't. They don't all, I mean, people don't not think there's going to be a defense department in 20 years. We, where, where's the money for that going to come from, too? We don't have money for any of these programs. But a lot of this is surprisingly <laughs> easy stuff to do. That, the, in fact, the biggest problems are the easiest ones. They are literally math formulas that don't even require, other than government changing numbers on. There's no, like, they don't have to hire a million people to work for the government to fix the social security I, I know, but problem. I a Republican senator on Fox News earlier was showing me a formula that you cut programs by 1%. One percent. You say trillions over ten years. Trillions. There is dozens of very and that's off the growth. That's off the plan growth. Yeah, there's all kinds of adjustments to Social Security and Medicare. Well, so why don't they do it? Because the public doesn't want to see either their the people think their payroll tax went up from the level that it was at a few years ago. People don't want to see that happen to well, a higher then, level. Well, and then Tucker, that payroll thing might be, and I mean this in a perverse sense, the best thing that ever happened because I, I think it woke a lot of people up to the fact that hey, your taxes can go up too. And, and, and you, you have a stake in this more than you think. What do you think? Well, I think that's probably right. If, I, I'm not sure most people understand that the payroll tax is set aside specifically to fund entitlements. Right. By the way, I think most people are woefully undereducated on this question. The average person, for example, thinks he's already paid for his Medicare. You turn 65, I've already paid for this. Well, actually, yeah. the average person takes more than three times out what he paid in. But nobody knows that because no politician is courageous enough to say it. Well, it was sold as a pension plan. That was the trick that kind of got the exactly. whole thing going. Bottom line, we've got to redo the, the plan. Right? Guys, I want to thank you all. All right, when we come back, be grateful.